गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर शर्मा प्रोफेसर बी बी सी इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज वॉडल टूडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द एल आई आर सी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस प्रीवियसली दैट एंटी एल आई आर सी फिल्टर इज टू बी यूज बिफोर गिविंग बिफोर कन्वर्टिंग बिफोर कन्वर्टिंग द सिग्नल इन टू इन द डिजिटल फॉर्म anti aliasing filter is to be used so what is meant by aliasing aliasing before going to discuss about aliasing first of all we should uh, know about that how many heads can be can the human eye see most don't notice unless it is uh, under 50 or 60 hertz suppose if the frequency is below, uh, under the 50 to 60 hertz below the 650 to 60 hertz we cannot see that generally people notice that the frame rate is less than the refresh rate of the display depending on the type of the crt you could not see it flicker at the 30 hertz or you could not you could still see it at a 120 hertz so when the minimum sampling rate is not respected distortion is to be occurred that is to be called as an alias aliasing causes high frequency signals to appear as a low frequency signal to to be sure that aliasing will not occur sampling is always preceded by low pass filtering so the low pass filter called as an anti aliasing filter the anti aliasing filter is to be the second stage whenever an analog input signal is to be given to the or again whenever the analog signal is to be converting into the digital signal anti aliasing plays a, aliasing filter plays a very important role it removes all frequencies above half the selected sampling rate so if we observe this figure it is a 40 hz sinusoidal figure so a sampling interval which is to be shown here from here to here it is nothing but the point not one second and the sampling frequency is about uh, the 100 hertz so the sampling theorem condition is to be satisfied here. so once if we observe here this figure it is a 90 hertz sinusoidal figure here also the timing period is to be 0.01 second and the sampling rate is about 100 hertz but here the sampling theorem condition is not to be satisfied because means as you are already know that if i uh, the know the sampling condition so based on the sample impl- amplitudes labeled with the circles in the second plot so once if we go for this here these are to be the sample imp- amplitudes we cannot tell whether the sample signal comes from the 90 hz sine wave or from the sampling of 10 hz sine wave and they are not to be distinguishable so thus they are aliases of each other we call 10 hertz sine wave is the aliasing noise in this case since the sample amplitudes actually come from the sampling the 90 hertz sine wave here the sampling condition is not to be satisfied why because means one of the signal is to be the 10 hertz signal and one is about the 90 so with respect to that which signal is to be and uh, what is the signal or uh, we cannot identify what type of signal it is so if we discuss when uh, this aliasing effect with one condition aliasing in the time domain of various sinusoidal signals ranging from 10 kilohertz to 80 kilohertz with a sampling frequency of uh, 40 kilohertz is to be given suppose if we see here a 10 kilohertz signal and apparent of 10 kilohertz signal and a 20 kilohertz signal with a 20 kilohertz signal and 30 kilohertz signal with a uh, 10 kilohertz signal so these are the different types of conditions uh, of uh, the frequency sampling frequency is about 40 kilohertz so once if we go for the signal processing there are two types of uh, domains we have to know that what are the two types one is about the time domain and second one is about the frequency domain there are two complementary signal descriptions which are to be given or which are to be appeared in the time domain form and uh, say frequency domain form 
so this is about the time domain signal why because means here we are taking the x axis we are taking the time and in the y axis we are taking about the amplitude of the signal and here in the frequency domain in the x axis we are taking about the frequency and in the y axis we are taking about the amplitude so this can be the one of the one more example for measuring uh, the time domain signals and the frequency domain measurements so this is about uh, the signal and their spectrum so this is a signal a sinusoidal signal with a time period as the x axis and amplitude as the y axis so from the if it is to be sampled so one is about the one sided spectrum of the signal and this shows about the two sided spectrum of the signal these are to be appeared in the frequency domain for an analog signal the frequency range which is to be in between the minus infinity hertz to the infinity hertz for the digital signal the frequency range is to be 0 hertz to fs by 2 yeah, here fs is nothing but the sampling frequency sampling effects in the frequency domain so the sampling causes the images of the signal spectrum to appear at every multiple of the sampling frequency fs suppose for example for a signal with a frequency of f the sample spectrum has the frequency components k into fs plus or minus f this is about the spectrum that has a frequency components so that is to be observed here by knowing about uh, by seeing about this diagrams 10 kilohertz sine wave sampled at the 40 kilohertz signal and uh, 30 kilohertz sine wave sampled at the 40 kilohertz signal so after learning about or after knowing about the basic concepts of aliasing first of all we know that what is an aliasing filter a signal with no frequency component above a certain maximum frequency is to be known as a band limited signal first of all we should know the band limited signal in uh, this case the signal band limited is to be 1 by 2 fs sometimes higher frequency components are added to the analog signal so in order to keep the analog signal band limited we need a filter usually a low pass that stops all frequencies above this uh, the sampling frequency as we know that a signal which has a band limited of 1 by 2 fs so here one filter is to be used here for stop all the frequencies above the 1, 1 by 2 fs so that filter is to be called as an anti aliasing filter anti aliasing filters are analog filters they process the signal before it is to be sampled so after uh, anti aliasing filter section if that signal is to be sampled and given to the sample and hold circuit and then that is to be converted to the analog to digital conversion and then the process is to be carried on so the process is the signal before it is to be sampled in most of the cases they are to be the low pass filter unless band pass sampling techniques are to be used so the sampling rate is lower than the required nyquist rate that is to be the condition fs is to be less than 2w it is called as an under sampling there are three types of condition that what we know one is about the sampling under sampling and over sampling in under sampling images of high frequency signals erroneously appear in the baseband due to the aliasing or due to the nyquist range so sampling of the band limited signal so the signals whose frequencies are to be restricted to a narrow band of high frequencies can be sampled at a rate similar to the twice the bandwidth instead of twice the maximum frequency so the sampling frequency should be greater than or equal to the bandwidth so the sampling of the band limited signal while the under sampling is normally avoided it can be exploited so suppose for example a band limited signal of all of the important signal characteristics can be deduced from the copy of the spectrum which is that appears in the baseband through the sample depending on the relationship between the signal frequencies and the sampling rate the uh, spectral inversion may cause the shape of the spectrum in the baseband to be inverted 
from the true spectrum of the signal. So this is uh, that what we observe from this diagram. This is about the Nyquist range, and this is about a signal. Once if we observe these three diagrams here, the signal which is to be required from the Nyquist range are of baseband versions of the original signal. So suppose the FS is equal to 80 kHz, the signal spectrum is inverted in the baseband. The signal spectrum is inverted in the baseband. Suppose if FS is equal to 100 kHz, the lowest frequency in the signal aliases to the highest frequency signal. The lowest frequency signals are to be aliases with the highest frequency signal. This one is to be called as the aliasing effect. Suppose if Fs is equal to 120 kHz, no spectral inversion occurs. So in these two conditions, there is no occurrence of the spectrum inversion. But in this one, the low frequency signal or the lowest frequencies are to be aliases with the highest frequencies. So this one is to be called as alias. So power sampling is the another type of sampling wherever the sampling frequency is to be greater than the 2 fm 2 fm 2 fm is nothing but the frequency maximum frequency so power sampling is to be defined as the sampling above the minimum nyquist rate that is to be called as the power sampling power sampling is useful because it creates a space between the spectrum that can be reduced the demands the analog anti aliasing filter So if we observe here, in this example we may observe that this one is the analog filtering before sampling and this is the digital filtering after sampling. So there is a difference is to be observed that. So analog filter is adequate to keep important signal information intact after sampling. After sampling, higher order digital filter can be used to extract the information. So this is called as the power sampling. So the power sampling, the ideal filter has a flat pass band and the cutoff uh, is very sharp. Since the cutoff frequency of this filter is uh, half of that of the sampling frequency, the cutoff frequency is to be very sharp here. And the resulting replicated spectrum of the sample signal do not overlap with each other. This is one sample signal and this is another sample signal. They are not to be overlapping. But in the aliasing condition, they are to be overlap. So, there is no aliasing is to be occurred whenever they are not to be overlapped with each other. So, practical low pass filters cannot achieve the ideal characteristics. So, firstly, we mean that we have to sample the filter signal at a rate and that is higher than the Nyquist rate to compensate the transition band. This is about the spectra of the sampled signal. The signal spectra. This one is to be the over sampled signal. Figure 1 shows about the over sampled signal and figure 2 shows about the Nyquist rate sampling signal and figure 3 shows about the under sampling. This one is to be called as the aliasing effect. This one is to be called as the aliasing effect. So, once if we observe with the bandwidth, uh, the band limited signal frequencies minus b to b, f max is equal to b. So, this is about a continuous uh, spectrum. And uh, the time sampling is uh, converted in the frequency repetition. Fs is greater than 2b. This is a sampling and this one is a over sampling. So Fs is greater than 2b. Here also no aliasing is to be occurred. And the third condition, Fs is less than or equal to 2b. It, this one is to be called as the aliasing effect. Aliasing signal is an ambiguity in the frequency domain. This is about the aliasing and anti-aliasing filter condition. This is very very important stage in the digital signal processing. Thank you. We will continue the analog to digital conversion in the next session.